as well with you today i'm coming with another banger on love and marriage huntsville a quick commentary um we're gonna dissect the scene of melody and dusty and we're also going to discuss the conversation that was being had on the love and marriage huntsville instagram page when they posted this clip a lot of people had a lot to say and I mean, we gonna we gonna break we gonna break it down. Um, also, we're gonna talk about this lawsuit against the blogger. We're gonna we're gonna bring it all break it all down. So, before we get into it, please take this time to like and subscribe to this channel, and let's get into the mess. So, I want to first start off about this um, blogger situation. So, I did a live. And Ebony the best came up on my platform. We were having a great conversation and she was spilling some tea, baby. And the girl knows some tea. And no disrespect when I say girl, she's a whole lady. But baby, she has the tea and has a very credible source. So if you ain't following, you might want to follow her because she'll just spill it just out of out of nowhere. So follow her so um she spilled tea that you know um destiny is out here thirst trapping for her life and she looked like it because she looked like a a cockeyed cockatoo in that daggone scene over here begging for for mel's friendship listen you ain't gonna go that hard for somebody if it ain't true so this is the details behind it Ebony came across some information. She then brings it to Dusty in a, in a sense of being able to say your piece. Now, some people are messy and would just throw it out there, right? She went to Dusty to say, hey, this is what's out there. Do you want to speak on it? Do you want to negate it? Do you like, what's your position on it? And Dusty went left. She just went left. I'm going to get my lawyer on you. Why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? Your wig too tight? You mad you keep wearing that same hairstyle? Why are you mad? You mad because you out here looking like Big Bird? The truth of the matter is, is that you're upset because it's the truth. And that's just my opinion. My opinion is my opinion, is my opinion. There's no fact behind it. But what I will say is it seems fishy that if someone has lies on you that you would get so upset and go left the way you did. Because she brought it to you. She didn't just post it and say this is fact. You could have easily just debunked it and been like, no, that's a lie, X, Y, and Z. But in my opinion... For you to be going that hard, that tells me something else. Hmm. 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 You need to get yourself together. Get your whole life together, Dusty. Anyways. So, I was asked... Because Dusty is Dusty and don't want to talk about her business, I was asked to take down the video. No problem. Because the last thing I want is for anybody to get in trouble. Okay? Um, so I did take down the video um, and just went from there. You know what I'm saying? So you got to respect people's wishes. But here's my thing. Dusty, 
Understand this. You are on a reality show. You are now public figure, a public figure. Therefore, your business is going to be ran. People are going to talk about you. You may not like it, but it's going to happen. Hell, you ain't even got to be a public figure for that to happen. People are going to talk about you. People are going to like you. People ain't going to like you. It's life. But to sit here and cry and willow and wallow over nonsense, you're pathetic. Get the hell up off our TV. Carlos King, get her the hell up off our TV. We don't want to see her dusty self and her dusty wigs. We're so sick of her. She don't want to open up. She don't want to talk about nothing, but then want us to sympathize with her. She's on IG crying like a big old baby. Get, like, get the hell from by me, for real. Like, please tell me, what is this girl's purpose? Can someone please tell me what purpose does she serve on this show? She's like a filler. She's a background person, like an extra in the background. There's no purpose for her to be mic. There's no purpose for her to be seen. Let her just be in the back walking across the, the camera or something. I don't know. But we don't need to see her. She don't bring anything. No substance. No conversation. No real life to the show. She needs to get chopped, okay? She need to be chopped. Off the show. Goodbye. Shoo. Like, oh my goodness, she gets on my last nerves. But anyways, I digress. Um, So now we're going to go into the scene of her and Mel having their sit down this past episode. And we're going to dissect it section by section. I'm going to hop in every time I feel like reading Destiny a little bit. And we're going to go from there. All right. Now let's get into it. You need to go. You don't get in the studios. Uh-uh. I ain't getting no tub. You ain't getting in the tub today? I ain't getting no tub. Now, I wonder whether she was privy to that photo shoot that Martel did. Now, y'all remember, he was in the tub. She brought the baby oil. I believe that's the same studio so <laughs> i wouldn't be surprised if she did know i wouldn't be surprised that she was saying that sarcastically in regards to her and martel and their quote-unquote friendship well thank you for stopping by well, i appreciate you reaching out for me to come by definitely wanted to reach out because you know you can't drive and when we left stormy's house i was nervous true but I'm glad, you know, that you made it home safely and that you can make it to support this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I showed you the video I recorded a while ago. Mm -hmm. Your song you first you came out. It. In support of Destiny and her new song, On 10, I actually <laughs> made a video. post online but everything that happened with madani really derailed that event from even happening i was planning on posting a video i recorded it long before madani's thing and when madani happened i spoke you, you didn't speak back i didn't you hear yelled out that's fine. You yelled out to me. Next time you come in my establishment, you speak to me. And somebody's and like, establishment is what I said. Yeah. So I felt you were not in a place to want to have a conversation because I felt like you didn't speak back. So I moved on along. And if you hadn't spoken back to me, I'm saying the conversation probably would have definitely extended to more of the, you know, hey, well, I'm proud of you. Glad you reopening. Da, so what da, was da. your thought process when you felt like I didn't speak back to you? I was like, oh, like, she don't feel like being bothered. And I won't finna bother you no more. Interesting. If it was a hello, it didn't suffice because for me to not have seen you since there were chairs thrown and you come in and say, hey girl, like we have just had a conversation yesterday, that doesn't show me that you're here in support of what is going on. Just like she expected that same respect and support in all of her events. And when she wasn't in a good space with Tisha, she didn't expect for her to even be there. So for her to step into my establishment, Give what you expect. What all right, let's break down all the lies up in this little section. First off, she said the last time she saw her was when 
chairs were being thrown. Let's reword that, Destiny. You mean when you were throwing chairs? She acts, She says it as if this was an act upon somebody else, as if it wasn't her being the aggressor per the usual. You know, just to say this this vague statement, chairs being thrown, you're not a victim. Again, it's again try, just trying to make herself the victim. Point number two. That was not the last time you saw her because y'all got up after Galentine's to talk and y'all seen each other at um, Jalen's housewarming. She checked on you at Galentine's. If she wasn't pro black, if she really had that much heat for you, she would not have gotten up to go check on you at Galentine's. She reached out to you afterwards. Y'all got up, spoke. That wasn't filmed, so we don't know what was said, whatever the case may be. And then you guys were at Jalen's. So, again, you're lying. That was not the last time you saw her. And even in those times, she showed you that she had no ill intent for you. She reached out. She checked on you. Like, these are things that are done by someone who doesn't have ill intent towards you. If she did, she'd be like, mm, not my business. I don't care. Oh, F her. Throw a chair back. You know, things of that nature. But she checked on you for a reason. How do you feel like we're here in this space? Multiple reasons that we've already sat down and talked about. But I'm not in a place to where I really care like that about what happened last year. Because I've made peace with it. So I'm good over here. How do you make peace with, one, trying to assassinate your friend's character, trying That's to embarrass her through the world? That's How did I do did. that? You called me a manipulator. I definitely didn't you say that. You called me a liar and a manipulator. I called you a liar? Yes, ma'am. And this is why this episode is called Preaching to the Liar. This girl lies straight through her teeth. And like I said in my recap, I'm here for the producers this season with bringing back receipts because they have shown Mel in a negative light throughout the seasons. And it's finally time for the truth to be exposed because Destiny is such a liar. You call the girl a master manipulator. I feel on multiple occasions, not only that one time on in that scene, but I feel like there were there were other times on social media where she also called her a manipulator. So or manipulative. So to hear her now saying, What? I didn't say what? I called you manipulative. I called me, me? I called you a liar. <laughs> like, ma'am, you know that's exactly what you did. But that just goes to show not only is she lying to Mel she's lying about the situation because if someone did something to you you would have definitely been like yeah you were definitely manipulative like you did that you lied you did that so the fact of her acting shocked and confused tells me not only that she's a liar but she's a master liar if we want to use her term now, one of the things that I've seen in the comment section is the fact that Melody doesn't address um, the situation. She don't talk about what was said. She doesn't, um, she didn't go back there. Do you know how draining it is to have a conversation about something you don't want to have a conversation about to begin with? But not only that, there's no resolve. She has her perspective. The other person has their perspective. There's no medium because they both, they're both speaking their truth or they're both saying what they believe to be right. And so there's never a place of resolve. So why would I do this to myself and talk about it all over again and, and get there, get all riled up? Cause what happens is, is you're peeling the scab off of a wound now. Something that's dead and gone, something that's healing. Not necessarily in the sense of them being friends again, but it's just the situation's over, right? It's done bleeding. So now it's scabbing over 
But when you start talking about everything, every detail all over again, you're picking that scab off for the ble- and, and the bleeding just starts happening all over again. I don't blame her. I'm not here for it. I'm not here to, I, I don't care to talk about the same thing all over again. I just don't. Um, and a lot of people, you know, they kept saying like, oh, Mel, um, she just is manipulative and she wants her way. She won't talk about what was said when, you know, when has she said what was said? And my thing is, is one could have been said, but been cut off. But also it could be something that was touchy to the point where she doesn't want to re relive it. She doesn't want to mention it again and mentioning it again gives it life. It, it, you know, it might be something that people aren't privy to. So now you're putting it out there. And I mean, again, this is all speculation, my thought process, but maybe she just doesn't want to talk about it anymore. You specifically called me a liar. Did you not at the cafe? I'm sure I did if that's what you lied. Yeah. And so I said, I haven't spoken to Melody. We text, mm-hmm. and she may or may not respond. And, and you then you, what, you call me? me a master manipulator, right? Whatever it is that you're feeling is heavy enough for people to want to stop doing business. Nah, it ain't a matter of me choosing or telling people they shouldn't do business with you. Of course, Melly's smart. So she said the right words to say, oh, yeah, you know, I would never. I would characterize that as a master manipulator. Be clear, when I said you were a master manipulator, it had everything to do with the situation. Oh, so now you did call her a master manipulator. Okay. That you hadn't even had a conversation with me about, regardless. How could I have a conversation when I text you? Like, what is going on? Why is everybody mm-hmm. saying we got an issue and but I'm not hearing it from thing. you? Did I not send that text message to you? But because we hadn't had the conversation, you, was, you went but to, I I'm a master that, manipulator. But did I send you that? You sent the text, but you and I didn't have a conversation. But did you respond? No! Of course I did. So I found or out from had a conversation. other people that you have an issue with me. Now, I already covered this in one of my last videos. Actually, the last one before the recap. Where I talked about season three, she has been going behind Mel's back telling Tisha she has an issue with her about this and an issue with her about that. That's why it was brought up at the taco lunch. And then she turned around and did the same thing in their hotel room after the reunion. Even if I saw you out at a restaurant, I could be like, oh, hey. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to be like, ugh, ugh, turn the other way. You know what I'm saying? Hey. That would be yeah, childish, absolutely. so of course you wouldn't do that. Huh? That would be childish, so of course you wouldn't do that. No, not necessarily childish. Some people's boundaries are different. Some people would prefer not to speak to nobody they don't fool with. That's just people. That is their choice. For me, when it comes to you, like I said, if I saw you out, I could speak to you. Hey, I'm not doing no drama. I don't want to be a part of no drama. And <laughs> peace is what it is for me. 100. We're moving in the direction which is being in each other's face and being okay i think it was great that we were able to sit together we shouldn't be not be able to i think it was great that we were able to be you love me don't you now in my opinion i feel like her calling her over to come to her photo shoot this whole conversation was to try even the comment of you love me don't you What's to try to reel her back in, reel Melody back in? She wanted to spark emotion in Melody um, in hopes to get her friend back. But sometimes it's too little too late. And once someone shows you who they are, believe them. And again, this just goes to show how can you speak so badly of somebody that you still want to be friends with, that you still want to surround yourself with. She couldn't have been that bad. In my opinion. At this point of the airing, I'm not sure how much Melody may have been privy to as it regards to what she said to her mother at the re 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 launch. Um, I don't know how much she may have known as it pertains to her running back to Martell and telling him what she said and, you know, what's being alleged as well. Whether she knew that then or not so um i i feel like she read right through it though if you notice her face at the end she's like hmm she gives that oh really but she like i feel like 
Destiny kept trying to spark emotion out of her. And Mel wasn't falling for it. But she wasn't going to go back down that road with you. She was just going to let you have your moment and talk about how you miss her and all of that stuff. And she's like, she had her head tilted to the side. And she's like, mm, oh, yeah. <laughs> she gave her nothing. Even her wording is intentional. You love me, don't you? As Melody is trying to explain that she's good with being cordial and just moving forward. You love me, don't you? She wants so bad to pull that emotion out of Mel to get back to where they were so she can continue to use Mel. But Mel sees right through it. That's why she's already saying like memories, a thing of the past. I'm good. Like she's she's not trying to go back there. She wants peace in her life. And that's also another thing that I've seen in the comments. They were saying that Mel used Destiny. And then when she was done with her, she was done with her. And I'm just sitting here trying to figure out, use her for what? What exactly is it that Destiny could be used for? And I'm not even talking about mon just monetarily. Okay, like we are, we already know that section is not her forte, right? Not knocking her because it may not be a lot of people's forte. It may not be something that a lot of people have, right? But what else is there that Mel could have used Destiny for? And understand that if she's using her, that means it's a one-way street. So it can't be a shoulder to lean on because Mel was also there for her many times. So again, it makes you wonder where these people are getting their thesis, their idea that she used Destiny from. Yes, I do. Yeah, I may not love everything about you, all your ways, but of course I do. Yeah, I definitely um, miss the friendship that we had, but I am in a place now where I am, you know, enjoying just being to myself by myself. I may have some good memories with Destiny. Do I miss those good times? Sometimes, yeah. That's what they are, memories of the past. The whole fallout of Mel and Destiny, right? It happened at a crazy time, because you know, I was, you and I both were just going through a divorce at almost the same time. And we were, we were each other's support system and then it was like, I went through a divorce with you. So it was a little rough. Um. Um, I don't have any, this is what I will say. I don't have any hard feelings. So that's why I can sit, I could come to your event and speak to you. I could sit with you at Stormy's event. Didn't know you were coming for sure, but you came and still sit there at a space that's very tight and have conversation and even agree with you on certain things you're saying. Like, yeah, that was messed up or yeah, I know that's right. You know what I'm saying? So like, why do you feel that you could do that? You don't because like... I don't have any hard feelings. Like I don't have a, I don't have malice and just hard feelings towards you. Like just because for me, when I make a decision to be where I am, it doesn't mean like oh, I hate this person and I want to see them fall in every area of their life. And I don't roll like that. So it's kind of a, mm, I'm cool. I can still sit with Destiny in any spot. She can be at a restaurant. I can speak, and it's okay. Because, Dusty, she's not like you. She doesn't want to see you fail just because y'all fell out. Hence why she's not hopping on LB's side when it comes to the custody case. Hence why she can come and support your little business on the re-re-re-re-re-relaunch. So, it's funny because people think because they're petty like that, they, they're trying to understand why you're not petty like that. Because for what? Like, what does it bring me? What peace does it bring me? What joy does it bring me? What does it bring me? Have, giving you space in my mind, hoping that you fail, looking to see if you fail. Like, for what? I'm good. I know where my blessings come from. So, listen, what's for you is for you, and what's for me will be for me. So, I don't even need a wish bad for you, because God got what he got for me set. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not that for me. So you feel like everything between us has ensued has put us in a place where we can be in a room together and be cordial without talking about what has ensued. We, we... 
like I said before, you have your perspective on it. You're not going to budge. I have my perspective on it. I'm not going to budge. So what's the purpose of talking about it? She wants to sit in it. She wants to marinate in the past. And it's like, let it go. That's probably why she's so broken now. She harboring all the stuff from her past because she just won't let stuff go. Let go and let God, girl. Let go and let God. Just one. We literally sat outside at Storm for about two hours at a, in a little table, all of us <laughs> crunched up together pretty much. And there was no negative. I didn't feel any. I didn't, I don't feel like I gave any. There was no negative, nothing between us. Actually, I mean, like I said, a lot of things I was saying or you were saying, I was like, well, yeah, that's true, right? Like, that's what it is. The facts are the facts. So with everything that's happened, like, in social media, by mm -hmm. text, by phone, by various other people, you feel like we're in a good enough space to be cordial in a room? I I think not feel. I think we just exemplified that. We did, but that was just being respectful to the space that we were in. Yeah. Now, let me be clear, because I've gotten to the point where I feel like I argue Mel's case a whole lot, right? And not that there's anything wrong with it because of just how they're treating her in general. But I'm the type, like, I'm fair. Like, I try to be even keeled and see everyone's perspective. But the way y'all be just moving, it makes it hard to find that balance where I can be like, okay, this person, you know, I, I can't find the balance because y'all are just doing too much on the other side. And I'm getting to the point no offense, but I'm getting sick of defending Mel. Like, why? Like, what is going on with y'all to the point where I have to side with someone so much? Like, this got to be, this is crazy. This has to be one for the books, seriously. And when I say I'm sick of defending Mel, I'm saying it like sarcastically because I have no qualms, obviously, defending someone who's being bullied and ganged up on. And, you know, the list goes on and on. I like Mel. I like her personality. Um, I like that she's driven. I like that she's hardworking. She's a great mother. Like she has so many attributes that are great to her. So I know I would never really get sick of defending her. But it's just like, can y'all give me something, something so I could be like, okay, Destiny did this, or you know, Tisha did that, something, please, please. I'm begging at this point. <laughs> like, this has got to be cr the craziest. In reality TV. Someone, can someone put this in the Guinness Book of World Records? Because that's where it needs to be. But that's all I have for y'all in this one. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below of this whole conversation. Let me know if y'all feel like Destiny was trying to bunt, like to, to get her, to pull her emotion out of her. Whether she's trying to, you know, rekindle that friendship. Or whether she was just being... A plain old, you know, nasty biatch like she usually is. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, y'all. I, I appreciate the love so much. Please, please, please. If you're not a subscriber, if you're not a brownie, that's going to be our new little name over here. All right. I was talking to my girl uh, at Wait when Tay Talk and she had a cute little name. I said, you know what? I'm going to have to come up with a name too. <laughs> So we're going to be the brownies over here, okay? So if you want to join Team Brownie, it don't cost you a thing. Just hit that like and that subscribe button. That's all. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace. <laughs> Love you, bye.